Kia ora, Canary. Welcome to Canary Live on 18th of May. It is a beautiful Monday. Yes, it is. I hope you had a great weekend and enjoyed some of that. Well, it was a bit mixed bag on Saturday, wasn't it? The rugby, to be fair, was a bit ugly. But Sunday, whew, what a gorgeous, gorgeous day out there. Now, Music Month, we're nearly well, about two-thirds through, and we still have that wonderful UE Logitech Mega Boom to give away. There we go, we've opened it up, how exciting! And you can see it's a beautiful blue one, isn't it? Yes it is, and you can take it in the shower. Very exciting indeed. To enter, all you need to do is go through to our Facebook page, make sure you like it, leave your details, and you could indeed, by the end of the month, be a winner of that beautiful mega boom. Next to it is to How With Poverty. You know, we met the author the other day, and it is basically a modern day version of Downton Abbey. A nice wee read for these winter evenings. And Mad Max, we've heard rave reviews about it through the crew and uh, the back of house today. Apparently it's a definitely a winner, so you could win those tickets and head along to Mad Max or any other movie you want to. And as well as that, we've got the Music Month t-shirt bag down here and the fantastic painting over my shoulder from Ara Mitchell Kirk. That could be yours hanging in your business or at home. And to win all of these, just call us on 377 or go to our Facebook page and leave your details. Have to announce a couple of winners though. H is for Hawk, that fantastic book that was about the whole writing to work herself through grieving and apparently it's been bought by someone from one of the actors from Game of Thrones, so very exciting indeed. Well, the winner of that is Doug Toon and she had another fantastic New Zealand band. The winner of that CD is Tim Kelly. Well, with on with today's show. It is Monday, of course. We are catching up with Karen Deegan, yes, with her emotional freedom techniques. And I always look forward to seeing what tips she gives us to take away. It's always good stuff indeed. And Active Health, Simon Wheeler, one of the managing directors, is here. And he's going to tell us about why Active Health are really are a one-stop shop to help you on your road to recovery. Mm -hmm. And we head out on location to St. Elisa Retirement Village and we meet a beautiful resident, Rewa. She is an absolute angel who cannot say enough about St. Elisa. We see her very shortly. But first up, yes, it is Monday and Nicola Frey is here from Nourish and I'm very, very excited about raw fish, we'll get to in a minute, but mm. marinated raw fish, Delicious. taking us to the islands you are. <laughs> yeah. But before we get there, we need some energy. Ugh. Yes, yeah, so well, you think you would get energy from them, but it's quite the opposite. Ugh. Yes. I know, look at them. But this is my ignorance. I didn't know they came in cans this big. They're massive, aren't they? It's, it's the, the problem with all sorts of drinks these days and, and sort of food in general is super sizing. Um, so that's 500 mils, two, two whole cups. And this is, this is the amount of sugar in each of those. So it's... Oh. it's uh, even if you were only worried about the sugar, which unfortunately there's other bits in there also, <laughs> but um, heaps of sugar there. Um, and so these size drinks here, energy drinks, um, they're called that really because they have so much caffeine in them, it's like drinking three cups of coffee. Wow. Um, yeah, so even on the labelling on the cans themselves, they said you should only have one a day. Of course, we don't recommend that you have any a day, but yeah, exactly. um, you know, they're limiting the drinking of them on their own cans because you know, they are... So full of sugar and caffeine. But what is it? It seems it's like an accessory now. Mm. You just see people in the morning having one of these yeah. to get them going for the day. And it's uh, uh, particularly with young um, students at high school, that sort of thing, it's quite quite common. Um, like you say, to you wake up tired, you get yourself going, and then um, you get this sort of zing. Um, and then, then often at night they can't sleep very well and then they, the cycle goes on again. They wake up the next morning and they haven't slept very well so mm. they have another energy drink. So it's, it's a really sort of dangerous cycle to get into and um, yeah, if you can possibly take yourself back out of that, mm. have a good night's sleep and try and get into a normal cycle. Um, yeah. So. Well taking it back, as you said, with children, is there food regulations you know, to stop? 
this? Yes, well it's, it's quite amazing actually because in the food regulations these drinks aren't allowed to be promoted to 18 years and under but you can see even the packaging itself obviously appeals mm. to young people so it's very cleverly done and when you go into a dairy and that sort of thing they're at the eye level of young people on the counter that sort of thing and I've just brought they've actually changed the labelling on them since I last checked but the some of the cautions on the cans which they have to have by law are very appealing to young people I'll just mm. quickly read you one of them okay. caution High caffeine content. Okay, we know that's why you're drinking it, but our legal guys made us warn you not to feed this to kids, women with a bun in the oven, or the weak who just can't tolerate it. Wow. So that's and surely <laughs> that had to be approved before it went on to the can. So that's the sort of and and there were there were other ones similar to that, but I'd probably say even worse. But they've been removed now. So yeah. So obviously they they are appealing to young people and um, they're not supposed to be drinking them. So. Oversimplifying it, Nicola, what for these children that feel they need the need to have one of these, what can we do to replace that instead of that? Yeah, well, uh, it's, it will be getting that routine of your day, um, trying to do, have a, a good night's sleep, trying to have water, plenty of water, um, and the Ministry of Health obviously trying to get plenty of water and calcium into young mm. people, so um, low-fat milk. And I know that people might think, oh, well, that's that's not a replacement to start no. with. But um, even if you if you need something sweet, then you'd be far better to get up and have a juice and get and get yourself going with that sort of thing, um, and try and wean yourself off in that way. It might be a bit hard to go cold turkey to your exactly. water. A smoothie um, though. Have yes, a drink. Have a yummy smoothie else. in the morning. Yes, absolutely. That's a good breakfast because that's part of the problem too. That you know breakfast might be missed and this might be the replacement. So even getting back into that, having a mm. having a good a good breakfast as a start to the day. And just a tip out there: if if your child feels they need that they need to have something in their hand, mm. well. A smoothie, they come in those gorgeous little containers and stuff like that. If they feel the need to have something, yes. replace it with something funky like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. But idea. anyway, that, we'll get off our little <laughs> soapbox, but it is yeah. quite frightening. Okay, this week I'm very excited though. Yes. Marinated fish, yes. yum. So, uh, yes, the recipe tomorrow, marinated fish salad. And I just think it's a nice time at this time of year. Peppers actually are a great price, and so that sort of thing, you can add any, any vegetables really that you can get at a decent price around this time of year but um, yeah, beautiful fish, coconut cream, mm. lemon juice to sort of cook that fish <laughs> um, and yeah, it's a great great different sort of meal for this time of year. Oh it is and it's just beautiful and it's so refreshing as well and that recipe will be available on the website yes. tomorrow yes, and we'll will. watch how you do it tomorrow, it's very exciting indeed. Good on you for bringing this up, but a lovely way to finish with that gorgeous marinated raw fish. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Thanks so much. Make sure you're watching tomorrow for that recipe. Now stay with us after the break. We catch up with the Active Live team and we meet Rewa from the St. Elizabeth Retirement Village. Don't forget your family. Yeah. Don't forget your roots, my friend. Yeah. We're in the New Zealand Music Month, Shona Lang. Jeepers creepers going back in time. Literally, now we head out on location to St. Elisa. We meet the most beautiful, beautiful lady, Rewa. I had the most wonderful time with her. She's such a card and so cheeky. So here we are, out to St. Elisa. St Elise is a pretty special place. We provide hospital, rest home, dementia care, but you know what makes it really special? Our residents. Now I want you to meet a superstar resident, Rewa. As soon as you walk in that front door, you get a wonderful welcome. The place is spotlessly clean, there's no smell like a lot of old people's home, and the staff greet you as if you've been here for years. And the staff are absolutely wonderful. They do anything for you, because I've got bad eyes and I can't see to read, but they'll read letters and, you know, do things like that for me, or read things that have got to be read and address envelopes for me. And they'll do anything for you. And you've only got to be here about three days and they all know your name. I can't speak highly enough of them. 
I always said I'd never go into a rest home, but I used to watch Pat for years and I thought she was lovely. And then I had to have earthquake repairs done and I came in here for two weeks respite care. And I absolutely loved it. And I still went home and I wasn't going to come here, but then I had to come in come into care and I came in on the 23rd of November and I've never looked back. Like Pat's wonderful, you know, you can always go and see her, the one on the reception's wonderful and all the girls are wonderful and I don't know, it's just the atmosphere. I've never been so happy for years. I, I haven't and that's the truth, I've never been so happy for years. And there's plenty to do. Patsy Ranger arranges a wonderful program. You know, every day, like Monday to Friday, we have van trips, we have entertainment, we have quizzes. The only thing I'm not very good at is they play golf down there, and I'm not very good at that, but that's okay. <laughs> I love the quizzes. I suppose you can't be good at everything. Pat doesn't pay me for saying this. Uh, I really, really, really am. I have a great, and there's no restrictions on you if you want to go out. You've only got to sign the book, you know, if you want to go outside, you know, which I do occasionally go out to lunch and things like that. But there's no restrictions. And I don't think there's any restrictions on you about what time you go to bed at night. I generally go about half past nine because I'm being old, I need my beauty sleep. I didn't look at anywhere else, I'd tell them to come here because they're so caring and as I say, they do anything for you because I've got to be showered and dressed and that and nothing's a trouble. Nothing's a trouble. They get a hundred and twenty percent. I'm nearly crying t telling you how wonderful they are. I've never been so happy. And I should have done it years ago. And I have to give a big shout out to the St. Lisa team because I know you'll be sitting there in the lounge watching and didn't Rewa do so well? I hope she gets an extra cup of tea today. Good on you, Rewa. Now I'm joined by Simon Wheeler from Active Health. Oh, hey, yeah. Podiatrist by trade, but yep. you're one of the managing directors That's of right, Active yes, Health. That's uh, right, myself and Mark Collins are uh, the physiotherapists, so we own Active Health and, and run that. Yeah, but I still, still consult as a podiatrist as well. Well, Active Health, when I think of Active Health, I think of when you were in Q2. That's right. Because I had a car accident and bad back, and it was so awesome being there because I first started off with the physio, yep. then I got put onto the osteopath, then had some massage treatment, but it was always under one roof. That's right. So we were out at Q2, and it's been there since, uh, well, we were there since 1998. And uh, obviously, after the earthquakes, we had to, had to get out of there. So we, we were treating a week later out of uh, actually one of our physiotherapist's house thinking that would be there for about six months mm. and uh, yeah, it took us three and a half years but we finally got out of there in August and we're, we're back in a um, fully fitted out um, clinic, uh, fully refurbished with a 300 square metre gym attached to it, so it's awesome, it's great. Fantastic, well let's yeah. talk about where you are but we've got some great, oh here we are, some great images though of the gym, so where are you now then yeah, Simon? So we're on the uh, top end of Manchester Street, um, just uh, down the Edgeware Road end, uh, about 100 metres off Edgeware Road, so nice and central really easy to get to off the main arterial routes and bus, bus routes and stuff, yeah. When people are on the road to recovery, because that's what you're there for Active Health, isn't it? To actually manage that time that they are yep. on the road to recovery. Um, a lot of roadblocks can be they don't want to travel from this place to this place. But that's not Active Health well, at all, yeah, is it? We, that's right, we don't need to because we've got it all there under one roof. So we've got very experienced staff and Mark and myself have really um, you know, prided ourselves on, on surrounding ourselves with experienced staff, being physios, 
Uh, we've got Sarah Woodson, the osteopath. We've got uh, Dr. Nick Kimber, um, the nutritionist, and, uh, and myself and Kieran Frank, another podiatrist. So um, what we can do is if you come in to see the physio, if we need someone else or, or we need to refer through, we can do do majority of that un under the one roof. And we've got the Duncan Traveller and his team there in the gym to do the uh, help out with the rehab and provide the gym space and stuff. Rapport is a big thing though, isn't it, when you're dealing with specialists? Yeah. Because, I mean, it can be for some people quite a long time that they're on that road to recovery, isn't it? Yes, yeah, that's right. I think, um, you know, again, we, we like to have, I think we've got a fun environment to, to both work in, and that comes through, I think, for our patients. Um, you know, you're there a bit if you've got a, a chronic injury or serious mm. injury, so um, we, we want to have a nice, friendly environment and, uh, you know, great rapport and great empathy. And, and again, I think a lot of that comes with having experienced uh, practitioners working there and stuff. Do you think Kiwis or people in general put up with pain because they get used to it? Uh, yeah, we're probably a bit slack at looking after <laughs> ourselves, particularly males, I think. Probably <laughs> a bit of a stereotype. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's, there's so many uh, awesome um, people out there to, to help you and, you know, that have either been through it them themselves and uh, or really well um, studied and, you know, lots of um, knowledge to, mm. to get you better quickly, you know, that's really what we're after. And I guess that also that's what Active Health is about too, is educating you. Yep. You may think it's just a niggle, oh, that's just, that's just part of who I am. Yep. I always have the little pain. No, that's right. But yeah. imagine having at the other end of the tunnel where that pain actually is gone. Yep, and, and our practitioners will educate you and, and, and treat, you, uh, treat you to get you rid of your acute pain, but also educate you to prevent you getting the further pain or returning pain and giving you tools to, to help yourself, yeah. Okay, so putting the spot sign, if we're sitting at home now going, gee, I've got this niggle on my shoulder, I really should talk to someone about it, what should we do? That's right, well, if you'd just give us a call on uh, 383 6290 and uh, our administration reception team are, are really uh, good at working out wh which practitioner you should see, whether it be the physio or the the osteopath or the podiatrist or whatever it should be. So you can talk to them. Often, uh, we, you know, we can the clinician can get back and talk to you if you've got further questions before coming in. Mm. Yeah. Another great idea, though, as well, is also gift vouchers because yep. I know I have in the past given away for podiatry for someone to actually go to a podiatrist That's because right. my goodness, if you have never done that to actually have a professional treat your feet. Yep is just such a joy for them when they go away as well. So yes, they've got a full range of gift vouchers that can be used on any of our services and stuff. Again, you just come through reception, admin. They're a great gift. Yep. They are an amazing, amazing gift. When you don't give anything to yourself, it's looking after yeah, yourself. Sure. Hey, look forward to hearing more about Excellent. Active Health and how you're going that road to recovery. But don't forget, so activehealth.co.nz is their website. It's got everything on there. Now stay with us after the break. Can't wait to see her this week. Karen Deegan with the emotional tools that we need to get through. See you soon. Righto, I love, love, love this time. Every fortnight, Karen Deegan joins me now with a subject that I think a lot of viewers will go, oh, that's me. Don't you think? I think so. Today we're talking about beating yourself up with your thoughts. Mm. And you know, I think of it as like this. It, even if we were pulled down as children, you know, perhaps if we were bullied, or perhaps our parents were a bit harsh on us, that happened years ago. Some of us as adults have left, been away from home for a long time, and yet we are actually worse to ourselves with our thoughts than anyone ever was. We are our own worst bullies. But why is that? As you, you pointed out there, that was years mm. ago. But why does it always keep raising its head though going forward? Well, it's yet another one of the things that we're not taught. We're not taught how to control our thoughts. So we're not taught how to think kindly about ourselves. So if we have been pulled down, perhaps by parents or bullies or even ex-partners, then we tend to, our brains get into that pattern of thinking badly about ourselves. and we can't get back out of that pattern until we change it because that's one of the things I do with my clients. Mm. I use EFT to change these beliefs and these thought patterns but also other way, I also teach people how to think differently. And it's amazing because when I, often I'll give my clients, I'll say to them, right, for the next, until I see you next, I would like you to become aware of your thoughts. And they always come back and they go, 
I have no idea I was so hard on myself. I actually didn't realise how many negative thoughts that I have in a day about myself. It's frightening, isn't it? Mm. And then, of course, we talked about ex-partners and that. If you're moving th forward for potentially a romantic relationship, mm then those could come back again, waves of that emotion well, in yeah. relationships. We get repeating cycles in mm. life, in relationships in particular. And the thing is that if we are beating ourselves up, perhaps thinking that we're not good enough or that we're a failure or that we're fat or ugly or whatever it might be, whenever we're beating ourselves up, we, can, we, we tend to attract that which we put out, Andrea. Mm. So we can't attract someone, a romantic partner, who's going to think we're wonderful if our thoughts are along the lines of that we're not wonderful. It's not even possible. We're going to keep attracting people who treat us the way we treat ourselves with our thoughts. It's so true though, isn't it? And I guess that lends itself also to your professional life as well. It does. Success. Once again, we attract that which we put out. If we think of, think of ourselves as a failure, how can we be successful? It's like any teacher knows that a child will do well if you build them up, if you encourage them and tell them, that was so good, you know, you could do this better next time, then it would be even better, that was so awesome. Do we do that to ourselves? <laughs> no. We don't. And when we are really hard on a child, they want to give up because they think, oh, I can't do it, and they want to give up, and that's what we do. We don't push ourselves as far, we don't achieve as much in life if we are pulling ourselves down and beating ourselves up with our thoughts. That is so true. Mm -hmm. And in fact, going back to um, when you were here last time, that tour you gave us as well, I mean, that really is very similar, isn't it, about actually, you know, going forth. A lot of the tools are similar, and a lot of them are just thinking tools. Mm. Like, oh, that leads us into one fit a day. Mm. The one for today is, think of someone that you really, really love so much, so, and, and someone that you really cherish, perhaps a beautiful child or, a, you know, not everyone's sort of, perhaps um, a, a pet if you're not sort of a people mm. person, but think of someone really loved and really cherished and how you would treat them. And never, ever treat yourself with your thoughts differently than that person. Oh. Treat yourself as the most loved, precious thing. Like my friend and I, we're always referring to each other as gorgeous. Like I, you know, I'll order a coffee and I'll say, um, and whatever this gorgeous lady's having, you know? But do we do that to ourselves? Do you get in the, look in the mirror each day and say, gosh, you know, hi, gorgeous, you know? No, it's true. <laughs> you just go to the automatic thing that's sticking out to you that you're not happy about, mm. isn't it? That's right. And is it mostly males or females? Is there any sort of I reason? Think everyone does it. Everyone does. Yes. And I just th it made me think of a story just then, is um, I play tennis and normally I just play for fun and enjoyment but sometimes I play in a tournament Ooh. and um, I was playing in a, in a finals one day and I'd come off the court and I overheard someone say to my husband, how did Karen get on? And he said she lost. And I heard that and I said to him, oh, I did not. <laughs> I came second. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to... <laughs> that. I love that. But putting a positive spin on something else. I refuse but... to think of myself as a failure. <laughs> second is pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the, what a great tool on how we can stop beating ourselves up. So, if we naturally are that sort of person that I think we talked about it, is someone compliments them, mm. they can't say thank you. They have to spin it back to them. So, what? Mm. How should we? How should we be more gracious about? that? One of the first things is when someone gives you a compliment, if your first thought is to you know, refuse it, um, say, oh no, no, you know, um, the best thing you can do is to stop that thought and change it in your head. Rewind that thought in your head and let something pleasant come out of your mouth, even if it's just thank you very much. Oh, yeah, exactly. Simple. Thank you very much and that is that thank you for your tour this week well, can't well, wait for fortnight's <laughs> time it's always good stuff fantastic website setfree.co.nz to find out how karen can help you change your world have a fantastic day we're now leaving you with daphne walker hi ed am I, a beautiful song have a wonderful day uh, ed, am I, we're proud of